DNA, the unique code that gives identity to every human being, as individual as a fingerprint. Until now. Science has got us to the point now where we can reproduce plants, animals, even humans, as easily as making copies on a printer. Humans on demand. It is a disgrace. Custom copied from any original. People made in the lab and not in the womb. Genetically modified multitudes for whom the term individual has no meaning. What if somebody were to create a carbon copy of themselves just simply to have some spare parts? If your heart goes or your lung fails, well, now you've got an exact copy. Are rogue doctors in secret labs cloning human beings? Are we condoning the creation of human-animal monsters? Find out tonight when we unseal the secrets of human cloning. What if the history you were taught in school was all a lie? Is our government controlled by a secret society? Welcome to the world of conspiracy, where cover-ups, secrets, and hidden agendas all trace back to a single source. We're about to unseal the secret files the government doesn't want you to know about. This is Unsealed Conspiracy Files. 1996, Edinburgh, Scotland. A domestic sheep is born in the laboratory of an animal research institute. Dolly becomes the world's first mammal cloned from the cells of an adult. Reaction to the announcement of her birth is swift and passionate. There were protests because there's a lot of moral issues that come along with starting to clone animals because ultimately that's gonna lead to cloning humans. In the world of strict religious people, they would say that scientists were tampering with something that's divine, the creation of life. Now, the problem with cloning, and we saw this in Dolly the sheep, is that the animal itself is really not that resistant to all kinds of problems. Dolly's six years on Earth are full of controversy and uncertainty. She must sleep indoors due to threats from those who fear the implications of her existence. Dolly died very early. Dolly had blood problems, various organs failed. Were her faults as a living creature, all of the health problems that she did have, was that due to her being a clone? And it's probably safe to say yes. Nature, one sperm, one egg. The result, an individual with equal parts DNA from a mother and a father, and the only way higher life forms can reproduce, until now. Under normal conditions, the sperm and the egg unite, and they yield what we call a zygote. But normal conditions have nothing to do with cloning. We take um, a skin cell, and we put it in an egg that we removed the nucleus of that egg. So that egg is just, uh, just like a chicken egg where you remove the egg yolk and you only have the white and put it in that egg and then stimulate it chemically and electrically and activating that egg to become an embryo. In the years since Dolly, other species soon joined the cloning club. The science is deadly serious, but some seem to take it far too lightly. In 2009, a genetics laboratory held a contest to clone the world's perfect dog. Well, who are the best dogs? Well, in one case, the best dog was a dog named Tracker, a German Shepherd, who was literally a 9-11 rescue dog. Tracker the dog died at 16 years old, but the five clones were born and are healthy. Although they're still alive, we have no idea what their fate is. In 2012, the International Equestrian Federation lifted a ban on the cloning of dressage horses. That means within a generation, every horse in the Olympics could be a clone of a single champion. As scientists perfect the art of the exact replica, their next step is both logical and terrifying, modifying the copy. Once you develop that, the next question is, can you modify that organism in specific ways? 
by adding a gene. Bizarre, and some say dangerous changes are introduced. What if the gene you add is a gene from a phosphorescent jellyfish? What if you could take that gene and implant it into a mouse? You then get a glowing mouse. Opponents of genetic modification and cloning fear the worst. Goats crossed with spiders. Spare parts grown on lab rats. Cows that give human breast milk. Because if scientists can manipulate certain kinds of genes, think of where they can go with this. For the right price, many doctors will now replicate your favorite family pet. But should they? Some people will spend all kinds of money to extend the life of their pet. But with each generation of clone, you introduce more chance for catastrophic failure. Are today's scientists risking the future of mankind in a dangerous attempt to play God? When we return, meet the one doctor who dares to tell the truth about what he's really up to. Unsealed Conspiracy Files. Welcome back to the world of conspiracy. This is Unsealed Conspiracy Files. Through cloning, scientists have been able to replicate species from simple sea urchins to monkeys. And human reproductive technology has been in place now for decades. When you create a human being in a petri dish or in a test tube, the dynamics change dramatically and therefore uh, it opened up a, a, a whole brand new can of worms, so to speak. To many, IVF is a violation of nature itself. The mother's egg and the father's sperm are combined in a lab. The primal act of conceiving a human is now a routine procedure, created for profit by the hands of a hired technician. Once we've perfected IVF, then it's just a quick jump over to actually making a full-fledged human clone. And that's a leap some doctors are taking whether we want them to or not. In 2005, the United Nations issued a resolution condemning human cloning. Not everybody has the same definition as right or wrong. Somebody may say human cloning is absolutely wrong, and yet one scientist who truly believes in it thinks it's right, thinks it's a worthy scientific pursuit. So work continues out of the spotlight of the mainstream medical community. The question, should we, is never asked. The only concern is, can we? Unsealed, case file, the human clone doctor. Dr. Panayotis Zavos, a US citizen born in Cyprus, runs a successful reproductive health clinic in Kentucky. For decades, he has assisted infertile couples with commonly used methods such as IVF to help them conceive. In 2002, he decides he wants to take it one step further. If a man or woman do not have what we call the gametes, the man does not have sperm. The woman does not have eggs. I like to give those people options. And I think a cloning becomes another option that they can exercise if they wish. If we can produce a sheep, we can definitely produce a human. In 2004, Dr. Zavos stuns the world when he makes a shocking announcement. Recently, transferred the first fresh clone embryo into the mother, and we're awaiting for results. The mother is a 35-year-old woman. Despite the controversy, he has no shortage of potential clients. Sure, people are lining up to get cloned, but is he really fulfilling a need? Or is he exploiting people's desperation and subjecting them to something with potentially monstrous consequences? At the time Zavos opens his clinic, animal cloning is rife with failures stillborn calves, lambs born with defects that make life excruciating and bring early death. Dr. Zavos claims that he screens every embryo for imperfections, but how is it possible that he can screen for every single problem that could arise? After 35 years of doing what I do, I had nothing to do with the birth of an imperfect child, of an unhealthy child. I don't know, I've been lucky maybe. And for the life of me, I don't understand why people say, I am going to be a responsive for the birth of monsters. And what kind of success rate do you think you might get? We can you... do 30% or better. Zavos publicly predicts a 30% success rate. 
What happens to the other 70% of clone attempts is a question which leaves many people wondering. 70% of these children, by your own words, would be born mutated and have to be destroyed. It is a disgrace. It is a violation of human justice and human rights. If cloning becomes commonplace, it could lead to populations harboring a range of unpredictable deficiencies. And what happens to a generation of defective clones who form this forbidding multitude of second-class citizens? I mean, here's a clone that only has one set of DNA from the person who's being cloned. What legal rights attach to that clone? The Supreme Court has ruled that corporations have the same rights as people, but when people can be copied as clones, the line begins to blur. So a company finds the workers it needs and likes. Then they take a small tissue sample, and from that tissue sample, they mass produce their entire workforce. Tireless field laborers, docile factory workers, whatever. It's a high-tech, big-money version of slavery. On the road to cloning a human, one step many consider unthinkable is already taking place. Unsealed. Case file. Human-animal hybrid. We develop a, a very fascinating system where we create a, an embryo using a human cell from the body of the individual that we want to clone. But instead of putting it in a human egg, we put it in a cow egg. It's called a hybrid embryo. Now, a lot of people say, why don't you transfer it? It's a lethal case. It will not, it will not develop. For me to answer the question whether that, that hybrid embryo gives you a half human and half cow is not going to happen. No, we are scientists, we're curious people, but also our curiosity stops at a particular point where the ethics issue comes into the picture. But is it just a matter of time before another doctor crosses the line Zavos refuses to? The possibilities are endless. From man-chimpanzee hybrids to dolphins with human hands. What if some super rich guy wants to create a half horse, half man creature that he can keep locked up in a cage or in his backyard? What is that? Is that considered a human with rights? Is that considered an animal that he can keep chained up? So far, cloning serves as a miraculous way to duplicate a living being. But what happens when the subject to be cloned is already dead? Coming up, could human cloning bring about a modern-day zombie apocalypse? Unsealed. Conspiracy Files. Welcome back to the world of conspiracy. This is Unsealed. Conspiracy Files. Advances in technology have made it possible to clone entire human beings from a single cell to order. The implications are dire. If you have some high military dictator that wants to create an army of himself with human cloning, he can do it. If those humans have no rights whatsoever, but are an exact carbon copy of that dictator, now you, in theory, have this brigade of super soldiers. All it would take is one perfect specimen. Just as any home computer can create countless perfect digital copies, so a military lab could manufacture an unlimited number of flawless warriors. If you created a human cloned army of super soldiers, they would be expendable. They wouldn't have a family to go back to. They wouldn't have any life to go back to. They would just be doing the dirty work of their master. In essence, really, you have to ask, would they even be human? Could today's underground labs become fully functioning clone farms? There are groups, out individuals, that are creating species of cloned and soldiers whose sole function is to fight on behalf of the 1% cloned to kill on orders. Normal reproduction is unpredictable and time-consuming. With human cloning, scientists can create new organisms on demand. So why stop with an army? Unsealed case file. Master race, master plan. Right now, cloning technology is in the hands of a very few doctors and scientists. 
But what happens when it becomes available to those with evil on their mind? Hitler wanted to achieve the master race. He wanted to go back to his Germanic roots and go back to what he considered the perfect human. To do that, he was going to breed back to that clean gene pool. If he had the technology for human cloning, he could fast track over all of that. Such a race of cloned super specimens could embody whatever qualities their maker found desirable. Beauty, athleticism, talent, strength. The result would be a world increasingly populated by the perfect. It's called eugenics, and cloning is a shockingly effective way to achieve it. If a leader wanted to achieve that perfection, they wouldn't allow people to reproduce anymore. We would be literally dictated on who or what we would have as a child. The benefits of human cloning aren't limited to nations, terrorists, or tyrants. The world's richest people would be able to commission clones for the sole purpose of providing replacement parts their bodies would be guaranteed not to reject. Billionaire in his 50s knows that in 10, 20 years, he's gonna need some organs to replace his dying organs inside. So he commissions a series of clones to basically cultivate what he needs. 10 years, 20 years down the road, he decides that he's gonna pick off one of his clones and just take the organs he needs, discard the rest. The billionaire has a new lease on life. The clone, well, he wasn't fully human anyway, right? Today it's a movie. 10 years from now, it could be reality. In such a world, no one is certain he isn't merely a vessel for somebody else's spare parts. Obviously, if you were a spare parts clone, there's no way you could know about it. Because who'd stick around if they knew at any minute somebody could come and take their liver or their spleen? Clones can be created from a variety of human cells, and they don't always have to come from a living person. The issue about working with diseased tissues is obviously fascinating to me. If I take a tissue from a live person and I freeze it, or I take it from a deceased individual that freshly died and I froze it, there's no difference between the two tissues. From Dolly the sheep to a human-handed dolphin, is this progress or a catastrophe in the making? When we return, what might these microscopic manipulations have in store for our future? Unsealed Conspiracy Files. Welcome back to the world of conspiracy. This is Unsealed Conspiracy Files. In vitro fertilization. A generation ago, it was controversial, even taboo. Now, it's commonplace. Is this the future of human cloning? I think that human cloning has a place and a role to play in this world, as long as it's used constructively and in a positive way. And if anybody tries to argue with me that I'm interested in creating monsters uh, or anything else, they don't know me very well. For the first time in history, doctors don't just get to decide who lives or dies. They get to decide on who's created. Think about that for a minute. It's not a matter of if human cloning will arrive, but when. So far, Dr. Zavos' attempts haven't led to a live birth. But when they do, we'll eventually be faced with a daunting question. Is that person staring at you from the mirror your reflection? or your clone.